In January of 1985, this beautiful midnight blue Mercury Capri rolled out of the Michigan assembly plant. Unlike other Capris, this one was destined for the American Sunroof Company headquarters to receive their high-end ASC McLaren conversion package. Fast forward to the fall of 1992 when this car came up for sale with a seven-digit telephone number and lacking an all-important area code. Young, determined, and wanted another car based on the Fox platform, 19-year-old Shannon Guderian called the number on the back glass with several different area codes until he found the right person of interest. Now, the current owner at the time was a lady from the Austin, Texas area, but had lost motivation to sell the car because no one in their right mind wanted to pay her $3,500 asking price. Well, Shannon convinced her that he had to come check out this car. He finally agreed to pay the $3,500 asking price, but wasn't entirely sure on what he had. After all, he couldn't simply turn to an internet search to find the important information he was hungry to obtain. Well, a year later in 1993, he read a magazine article referencing Henry Hank Huseman of Paradise Automotive in sunny Florida as the authority for the ASC McLaren Fox bodies. Shannon picks up the phone to reach out to Mr. Huseman, and from there, a relationship was born. So after acquiring the needed parts and accessories to restore some life back into his ASC McLaren Capri, his uncle Ted Vaughn was a key part in the restoration process. After all, Ted was a restoration artist by trade, having worked in a paint and body shop for several years. So, he was no stranger to restoring cars back to their former glory. Sometime after the restoration that Ted and Shannon performed, Shannon ended up selling the car to one of his close friends, who then passed it on to a fella at a local Ford dealership here in Waco, Texas. In 1999, Shannon ended up buying the car back, which is ironic, because that was the same year he founded his company, Late Model Restoration. He then traded it for a 65 Fastback to Scott Hubbard, who was another one that was responsible for fueling Shannon's passion for the Mustang. In 2002, Shannon reacquired this Midnight Blue ASC McLaren Capri for $1,250. Uncle Ted had always liked this car, so being the person Shannon is, he ended up giving the car to Ted and off he went. Uncle Ted daily drove the car for 10 plus years and unfortunately, it was retired to the elements, which is the condition you see it in today. Since Mr. Huseman of Paradise Automotive was still the source for all things related to ASC McLaren Fox bodies, Shannon picks up the phone and gives him a call. I mean, think about it, 25 years later, he's calling Hank for the same parts that he did back in 1993. It's pretty cool if you ask me. Now, what made these ASC McLaren cars unique were their high-end styling cues from lead designer Peter Muscat. Several interior and exterior components were upgraded along with an abundance of enthusiast-minded performance upgrades. Interior styling included an SVO-style leather-wrapped steering wheel along with the leather-wrapped shift knob. Other interior upgrades were sports seats with an adjustable thigh and side bolsters, a premium sound system, ASC McLaren specific floor mats, and this thing even had a state-of-the-art Whistler Spectrum Super Heterodyne radar detector. Exterior upgrades featured ASC McLaren specific ground effects, aerodynamic headlight and taillight covers, fog lights, a custom spoiler, one-off wheels, unique quarter windows, and of course, an easily identifiable graphics package. That way, people knew this wasn't your typical run-of-the-mill Capri. Performance-wise, the 85 ASC McLaren Capri's engine turned out 210 horsepower and 268 pound-feet of torque. A Borg Warner 5-speed was made it to the high output 302 for precise gear changes. While on the assembly line, these cars had a special DSO code, D32 to be exact, which told assembly line workers to outfit the engine with the Ford Motorsport B303 camshaft and inner tie rods from a Thunderbird to help with bump steer. Chassis and suspension upgrades included shocks and struts, lowering springs, a modified braking system, and a traction lock differential. Now all that good stuff in 1985 could be had for a very cool 21 grand. At the time, those modifications and upgrades were miles ahead of the competition for your everyday production car. Now going forward, we do have some very big plans for this 85 ASC McLaren. As you can see, it currently looks like if it was left in a barn and totally forgotten from cobwebs, bird's nests, rust, and missing ASC McLaren specific parts. There's a lot of work to get done. So here's the full scoop. This is Project Mercury Rising. The plan is to fully restore the car back to its former beauty with up-to-date modernizations and amenities relative to the Fox body culture and of course, Shannon's OCD-minded custom touches. We're going to keep Project Mercury Rising a complete and total secret from Uncle Ted during the entire journey. This won't be easy by any means, but we're up to the challenge and we're here to prove to the world that we are the real Mustang enthusiasts. The first official stop for the Capri is our super secret disclosed location for teardown, disassembly was short, sweet, and to the point, and key contributors were, of course, Shannon, 
Scott Springer, a few of Shannon's close friends, and even Uncle Ted. Yes, Uncle Ted was a part of the teardown as this was purposely orchestrated so that Shannon could get the car back in his possession and set the expectation that the car it'll be fixed one of these days. Well, unknowing to Uncle Ted, his car, Project Mercury Rising, had officially punched its ticket to a full restoration. After disassembly, Mercury Rising was turned over to CNC Collision in Waco, Texas, where it underwent its media blast treatment and many hours of structural reconstruction and enhancements. Who better to perform the work and, of course, tell us a little bit more about what he did than Veldon Cunningham himself. Mr. Cunningham is the owner and operator of CNC Collision and has several years of automotive refinishing experience. All right, Bill, so when this car got to you, it was obviously a car. It had been completely gutted. Where did y'all start with the restoration process? Well, we carried it out to our sandblast booth and uh, sandblasted all the uh, paint off of it. Okay. Then primered it and bought it in here. And then I started cutting everything off of it. I leveled the car up on everything, then right, cut it all off. What I remember, there was some rust holes here, a lot of frame, yeah. a lot of frame rail it, it, uh, damage. So those, you had to cut those completely out. Yeah. Like you did some hacking here. Uh, these are our, actually, uh, those are new. Yeah. our smooth fender aprons. Uh -huh. Yeah. You did some welding here as well on these. Yeah, I had to slick the towers out where they had drilled holes in it and this and that in the years past. Okay. And, I got you. Yeah. And then I believe you were telling me that you had to take multiple core supports to make this one. Right. We had to take the core support, do a little modification on it to okay. make it fit. It was actually for, it's the same, but it, it was for a little different model. Where the, the rails are bent in here, they are actually cut. They're just straight rails. Okay. And they're cut and then the factory rails are actually bent. And then you have to bend them and get your right curves to them to match up with your core support gotcha. and wow. weld them all together. A lot, lot of finesse. And I believe yeah. you also had to, that's where you had to do some of your own custom fabrication work as well. Oh, yeah, because that general area? This corner here was rusted out on this tower. Okay. So we had to take and uh, cut it out and weld in new metal and go from there. All right, so marking our way from the front here to the back, Velton did have to make a few modifications here to the inside. And what exactly were those modifications? Well, this support right here for the seat was all broke out, so we had to go in there and rebuild it, weld it up, and uh, then the floorboard was actually split in places where over the years it had give. Right. So I had to go in there and, and beef it up and weld them, and I think it had about eight splits in the floorboard okay. there. And that was just from the structural integrity it just uh, had, had gave out, or was that from rust? No, it was just where it had give out, the given. Okay. Over the years of up and down. Yeah, up and down, no doubt. <laughs> I think this car had been a race car or something at one time. I'm sure it was. Yeah. Uh, 302. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so rounding out the last modifications and Belton's uh, keen attention to detail, this area had a little bit of rust. You had to make some modifications here as well. Yeah. This, this had uh, rust area here, so I had to go in there and cut this out and uh, bend some metal to fit it and weld it all in. The inner structure, I had to put a piece in it too, and uh, then weld it all up and smooth it back out. Outstanding. Yep. Looks like the factor. All right, Belton, we can't thank you enough and CNC Collision for being a part of this. Uh, thank y'all so much. All right. Now that Mercury Rising has new frame rails, core support, a set of LMR smooth fender aprons, and is finally rust free, it's back to the hideout so Shannon can begin to work his meticulous magic on a few odds and ends before the car heads off to pay. All right guys, we're with Mercury Rising at a remote location because JR, our painter, is actually about a week behind from getting this thing to paint. So that is gonna give us the ability to be the real enthusiasts that we are here at LMR. Now to date, including disassembly and the nut and bolting we've done thus far, we have about 160 hours of actual time from LMR employees.
Now you're probably wondering what all this crazy blue painter's tape is all around this car. It's actually here for a reason. This is pinpointing any little note that needs to be addressed at this particular location on the car. So whether it be a rust area that JR needs to dedicate some time to, or we need to apply some seam seal, some caulking. Now we've done a lot of caulking and a lot of seam sealing because we want this car to be as solid as possible. At this point, we also did a ton of 5.0 Resto hardware to get this thing ready for paint and get it as close to the factory as we could just before it does go off to paint from whether it be your hood bumpers, your hood hinge cups, your hood hinges, door hinges, latches. If it was pretty much on the car there the way the factory had it, we put it on there as well. Saying so, you gotta notify the painter to understand that hey, I have to seam seal that door hinge after I've fitted and gapped and done everything to tidy the car. Now, while I'm on the subject of 5 0 Resto hardware, our door hinges were completely reworked with new pins roll pins and retaining hardware to make sure these things function just like they did when this car rolled out of the factory. All right, now other than all of the caulking and seam sealing we had to do to Mercury Rising, there are a lot of holes still to fill. Of course, we're gonna have to roll our rear fender lips here to fit the killer wheels we're gonna throw on this car. It is gonna roll to JR's with the front and rear bumpers on it, as well as the subframes we still gotta weld on because the entire underbody of the car is gonna be the same color as the exterior itself. So we got a lot of work to do. We're gonna jump back on this thing, and the next time you guys see Mercury Rising, it'll be rolling out of the trailer at JR's. All right, Project Mercury Rising has landed at JR's Custom and Collision here it's going to undergo a complete and total transformation. And most of us that are in tune with the restoration hobby knows that the paint and body process, it's grueling. And our Capri has a decent amount of work that needs to be done to it to make it right. So to ensure that the car meets Shannon's meticulous standards, the factory suspension was removed and it was loaded onto a rotisserie. Yes, a rotisserie. You don't typically see Capris on a rotisserie, much less a Fox body period for that matter. Having the car on the rotisserie is going to allow the body guys to address any and all areas of concern on the Capri. This includes additional seam seal, fender lip modification for our wheel and tire selection, 
and several hours of filling and smoothing imperfections before the car can be shot in primer. Not to mention, we did have to source a few bumpers before we finally found one that we could make work. Once the primer was shot, the car was then block sanded to further reduce surface waves and minor imperfections. Doing this is going to make sure that once the base coat and then the clear coat is sprayed, that you get that mirror-like finish. Before the first coat of Midnight Blue Metallic could be laid down, the car was then shot in sealer to not only lock in the primer, but to prepare all surfaces for the initial base coat. So Midnight Blue Metallic paint was mixed up and the satisfaction of seeing that beautiful color getting sprayed onto the Capri, boy was it rewarding. So just to prove how thorough this project is, you'll see that the underside the inside and the top side of the car was sprayed. After the car was clear coated and proper curing was achieved, Shannon initiated his thanks and appreciation to JR and his crew. And then Project Mercury Rising was loaded up on the rotisserie, into the trailer and back to the hideout for assembly. All right, on this go around with Project Mercury Rising, the car has made it back to the hideout. We've taken it off the rotisserie and have put it back on the factory suspension for the time being. While the car was being cut and buffed, Shannon did notice a few areas around the hatch that needed to be reshot. Luckily, that was a lot easier to fix than what it seemed. So I don't think we've mentioned this before, but because of the car had been in multiple accidents, Shannon did have to source a driver and passenger side door. While he was masking the doors off to paint the frames in the exterior gray color, he noticed that he had sourced manual doors. No biggie, right? Just take a hole saw to your perfectly painted doors and drill some holes to accommodate the wiring and the rubber boot. It's been really nice to do this before we painted the car. The car was then covered in some drop cloth so that several exterior moldings could be painted in the factory gray exterior color. These parts included body moldings, door lock cylinders, the rear wing, cell panels, outer door belt moldings, and anything else that needed to be gray in color. Thus far, there were several late nights put in to get the car built, and one of those nights included Shannon and LMR employee Jordan Hetty 
masking the front and rear bumpers and the quarter window surrounds to prepare them for the exterior gray color. Headlights and taillights were installed, and then Shannon switched gears to interior insulation. Now, if there was a flat spot in the inside of this car, it got boom mat from the floor pan, the roofs, the hatch area, you name it, it was insulated. So on top of all this boom mat craziness, a complete insulation kit was installed to further reduce vibrations, road noise, and keep the interior well insulated. The last step to this multi-layer interior insulation project was Scott Hubbard putting this awesome firewall insulator to ensure that Uncle Ted has a super quiet interior. The run channel weather strips, outer door belts, lock cylinders, quarter window frames and the door handles were installed and some of this stuff was a two-man operation simply because <laughs> Shannon and Hubbard they didn't want to scratch the fresh paint. While all this was going down, the factory seats were thoroughly disassembled by Dougie England, who is a longtime best friend of Shannon, and he sent those off to a local upholstery shop so that they could get freshened up. With the help of Tony Hetty, who is another one of Shannon's longtime friends, and his sons, Jordan and Curtis, they installed the bubble glass into the rear hatch, along with a brand new Ford Original windshield. At this point, the Capri is coming along nicely and is starting to look really good. Shannon addressed a few more of the exterior moldings while Hubbard and Dougie addressed the pedal assembly, HVAC box, and started to lay out the carpet. There is still a lot of work to do, so stay tuned for the next installment of Project Mercury Rising. Thus far, the progression of Project Mercury Rising has been awesome, if I do say so myself, and there is no doubt we are heavy in the restoration trenches with this Capri. Picking up from where we left off previously, we were messing with the windshield, the bubble glass, and exterior moldings, so we installed the wing along with original ASC McLaren tinted quarter glass. Now, for those of you that are unaware, the quarter glass was one of the unique characteristics on these ASC McLaren cars. Because Shannon opted for new door glass, we had to remove the bracket from the existing door glass, 
get it cleaned up and installed onto the new glass. New guide rod bushings and grease followed suit, and then the assemblies were loaded into the doors. Shannon then finished painting the dash and double checked to make sure all the speed nuts were present along with the fuel door and hatch release button. Scott Springer assisted with cleaning and he even re-loomed some of the existing wiring harness that sits behind the dash. While this sounds simple, trust me, it was very tedious. The main harness was in position back behind the dash and the dash was set into the car. Mike Nichols, another employee of LMR who has a very long history of mechanical, electrical, and car audio knowledge, spent several hours dialing in anything electrical related on the Capri. At this point, we went ahead and shifted our focus to the underside of the car. Finally, the factory suspension was removed once and for all, and that unveiled a clean canvas to properly route brake and fuel lines. The Fox Link 8.8 .8 rear end was blasted, painted a beautiful gloss black, and loaded with a Cobra 31 spline differential, 355 rear end gears, and high strength 31 spline axles. Since the rear end was the cornerstone for our maximum motorsports suspension, it was set in place. The rear suspension for the Capri consists of high-end components which include a torque arm, pan hard bar, sway bar, lower control arms, and adjustable shocks with coilovers. Rear brake rotors, calipers, caliper brackets, and hoses were installed along with the fuel tank, fuel tank shield, fuel pump bracket, and anything else related to the fuel system at the rear of the car. From here, we took a brake at the rear of the car. For the most part, it was already buttoned up and we shifted our focus to the engine bay in preparation of our Gen 2 Coyote engine. We addressed the unused and unsightly holes at the firewall with a smooth firewall cover that of course was painted the same color as the car. Our SVE radiator and dual electric fan setup was set into place and we had to drill a hole in the strut tower to accommodate our proportioning valve. You gotta love drilling holes into freshly painted surfaces. Now wheel choice was crucial for the Capri. We wanted something that shared similar traits to the original mesh wheel that came on the ASC McLaren. And of course it had to be an SVE wheel. After a few renders from our very talented graphics designer, Jeff Oliver, we decided on SVE series one wheels with of course a few custom touches. The 18 by nine and 18 by 10 inch wheels were blasted, painted beautiful ASC orange, and then the face and lip of the wheel were carefully machined to imitate the original wheel. Further details with the wheels included Shannon's one-off center caps that he painted midnight blue metallic, and then rightfully placed a very small ASC McLaren logo in silver. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stroke our own ego here, but I think we knocked it out of the park with the SVE Series 1s. Now for the power plant. Scott Hubbard began dressing the Gen 2 crate engine, which included the flywheel, clutch and power steering assembly. The long tube headers were installed and then the T56 Magnum transmission was bolted to the bell house. To make things easy, we positioned the drivetrain underneath the car and then lowered the car on top of the drivetrain. There is still so much work to do, but I think at this point of the build, we were starting to see that real small glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel. Until next time on Project Mercury Rising, you know what to do by now. Keep it right here with the real Fox Body Enthusiasts, LMR.com. Hey everybody, I'm Landon with LMR.com. Our very own Project Mercury Rising is nearing the finish line. Now, for those of you that would like to see the progression up until this point, I invite you to watch the videos prior to this one. That way you can see just how far this Capri has come. Our last checkpoint was lowering the car onto our assembled drivetrain. That way we could finish wiring our one-off gauges addressing the remaining systems in the engine bay, and of course, building our custom exhaust. Other than the long tube headers, the exhaust consisted of a catted mid pipe that was precisely modified to clear the transmission cross member underneath the car.
A simple pair of chambered mufflers were welded into place along with a set of our 5.0 Resto LX tailpipes. Finishing touches within the engine bay included our custom cold air kit, adding fluids to any systems that needed it, air conditioning and heater hoses, and then bleeding of our SVE Cobra style brake kit. The interior was next on our list to finish out. Now, for those of you that have disassembled Fox interiors, with the exception of the dash, know that they come apart and go back together relatively quick. The seats were back from the upholstery shop and they looked fantastic. As a matter of fact, they were one of the last items to be installed because we had some minor custom touches and small details to address elsewhere on the car. Shannon built a one-off tow hook and constructed a wicked custom splitter with precise support brackets that bolted to the core support. For added aesthetics and for a more complete look, the splitter was wrapped in carbon fiber vinyl. Now, in order to prep the car for its ASC McLaren decal treatment, Shannon gave the car a thorough cleaning to remove any potential contaminants that may have been present on the surface prior to installing the decals. Like many other original ASC pieces from Hank Huseman, Shannon faced the painstaking process of applying 35-year-old vinyl. Yes, 35-year-old original orange ASC McLaren striping. Because of the age of the material and the extreme care needed from Shannon and Doug, the ASC McLaren striping took quite a while to install onto the Capri. Toward the end of the build, we did encounter just a slight mishap with one of the AC hoses. Like any project, you can't always prevent the uncertainties. Long story short, an AC hose had come loose, leaving us with a messy engine bay and a dinged up hood. The engine bay mess was easy cleanup, but the hood had to go back to JR's just days before the reveal to Uncle Ted. While the hood was being painted, the Capri hit the road for its maiden voyage and driven for the first time in what seemed like an eternity so that Hubbard and Shannon could log any last bit of information to refine the custom PCM calibration. With the calibration complete, final paint correction follows suit to bring out maximum gloss and clarity in the beautiful midnight blue metallic paintwork. Because we were pressed for time, the hood was picked up from the paint shop and brought back to the hideout. Shannon blocked the hood to remove any orange peel or texture from the clear coat, and then I followed him with a heavy cutting compound and final finishing polish. Now this was about six o'clock before the evening of the reveal and even I found a moment to let the Capri just pull me in and really just let it sink in on what was accomplished by so many genuine people. The hood was reinstalled about 10 o'clock the night before the reveal and then the final piece of this crazy Mercury Capri puzzle was Mr. Hank Huseman himself installing the Mercury logo into the grill. Shannon then situated all of the special novelty items in the hatch area, and he even stuck Uncle Ted's co-pilot in the center of the dash. During the long journey of Project Mercury Rising, it was kept a complete and total secret from Uncle Ted. For those of you wondering how we did it, trust us, it was not easy by any means. Uncle Ted works Monday through Friday, eight to five here at LMR, and from day-to-day -day conversations with him, and just him poking around the building. There were ASC McLaren specific parts under his nose the entire time, and he had no idea. So you'll have to stick around for the next episode when we reveal the car to Ted and hand over the keys to his beloved ASC McLaren Capri. Until then, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and share this video, and for all things Foxbody.
Keep it right here with the real enthusiasts of Lamar.com. Dreams come true, buddy. Dreams no come true. No way. Hey everyone, I'm Landon with LMR.com. It's time to reveal Project Mercury Rising and hand over the keys to Uncle Ted. Now, for those of you that haven't seen the other episodes, I highly recommend you go check those out as this Mercury Capri has underwent a complete and total transformation. So here's the lowdown on the reveal. Shannon has created this very simple yet very humble idea to surprise Uncle Ted with his ASC McLaren. Well, it just so happens that it's Tim's birthday. Tim is Ted's brother, and Shannon has flown Tim here to Texas to not only celebrate his birthday, but play a key role in the reveal of his brother's car. The setting for the reveal is our hideout. This is where Shannon himself, Shannon's family, his close friends, and anyone who played a part in building the Capri have gathered to share a day in which I think all car enthusiasts dream of. So the plot is as follows. Ted thinks he's tagging along with his brother Tim to his so-called surprise birthday party. Well, like the rest of us, Tim knows exactly what's about to go down. And now that Ted and Tim have arrived, Shannon and his family exchange greetings like all families do, while the rest of us remain tucked away inside of the hideout, anxiously awaiting. We've been waiting on you guys. We got a little surprise for you, Uncle Tim. We'll do a little riding around. Yeah, that's good. What's up, Uncle Ted? Hey. How you doing? Great. Breakfast You ready to party? Hey, ready to have a little breakfast? Uncle Ted, I got something I want to show you. I love you so much. Well, it's his I love, birthday. I love you mine. so much. Okay? It's his birthday, so, not mine. I want to show you why I've been so distant oh, for the last two Shannon years. Ryan. Shannon wasted no time. He positioned himself and Uncle Ted while we had several cameras rolling, including one of our camera guys hiding behind a small trailer and then Shannon hit the button to the garage door. Mr. Hank Huseman fired up the Coyote powered Capri and rolled it out to Uncle Ted. I mean, who better to drive the car to Uncle Ted than Hank Huseman himself? Quick history on Hank, he is the one that provided all of our hard to find specific ASC McLaren Capri parts. Dreams come true, buddy. Dreams no come way. true. No way. Yes way. That's, that's Hank from ASC McLaren I'm in your car, buddy. <laughs> Yes way, buddy. Oh. That's your car. That's your car. No way, man. <laughs> That's your car, buddy. No way, man. You ever met Hank from ASC? No. Well, there he is. <laughs> I've seen pictures of him. Now, at first, Ted was a little unsure, but as he was able to share his emotions with his family, it started to sink in that this really was his car. I've only seen pictures of you and talked to you on the phone the once or twice. Again. Oh my god. This <laughs> took my car. This is bad. <laughs> That's your car, buddy. It's your birthday. Yeah, sorry I've been a little distance for the last two years. It took me a little while. It took me a little while. I love you so much. You deserve it, man. You deserve it. So. <laughs> of course, family was first. Ted made his rounds with his family, hugged them, hugged Shannon, and then Shannon introduced the rest of us to come join the celebration. And all these people in this building helped build this car. So everybody that's here today helped build this car. Well, I'm glad we didn't need a defibrillator. I feel way better. And left your pilot in there. Now, if you follow the build, I did mention in episode two that Ted was a part of the teardown and Shannon had told him that they'd get to the car one of these days. Well, Ted's next response is exactly what Shannon had told him the day Ted left his shop after they tore down the car. Pretty good day. Sorry I had to lie to you so much. I wasn't expecting it, Shannon. Well, that's good. I was ready any time just to do it at our own pace. No, well, you don't have to pace no more. You wouldn't want to pace that far. Hey, if y'all just want to come out and enjoy it, y'all come on out. Y'all don't have to get stuck in there. Show them under that hood. Pop the hood on that thing. Let's see what it's got there. Oh, it's popped. I got your back. I got your back. We kind of juiced the motor up in it a little bit. 
Holy crap! No way! Holy crap! Oh no! <laughs> You're not allowed to change the spark plugs. Never. We'll tighten them for you. How many parts from late model in this? Everything. There's about 18 parts from your car. You make this? And we made everything. Wait till you see it. The underneath's prettier than the top. Still overwhelmed with joy. Ted expressed his appreciation and gratitude to everyone else that was involved with the project. No. Did you rebuild the carburetor? <laughs> no, I had to rebuild the carburetor. I'm too old to do that now. It's fresh. It's fresh. Fresh, fresh. Other than the surprise, the next best thing was seeing Uncle Ted take his ASC for a drive. He buckles in with Scott Hubbard, and away they go. Shannon? Yeah? I'm going to drive it. Go drive it. It's your car. It's supposed to drive it. Easy. <laughs> I got on it, it would just go, Wow! Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. This gave the rest of us time to get the four post lift situated inside the shop. That way, when they got back, we could show everyone the amount of detail there is on the underside of the Capri. Amongst all the car talk, we sang happy birthday to Tim and even got Hank Huseman's feedback on this awesome one of a kind build. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Shannon called me a couple years ago telling me that he had this project in mind that the same McLaren that we, he's been buying parts for the years that have changed hands back and forth and ended up in his uncle's hands. He wanted to surprise his uncle and restore this car. Come out and for the unveiling, you know, took his invitation. I was excited to come out here. I was glad he invited me and you know, I'm glad I'm part of the program. He seems real passionate about it, real excited about it. And <laughs> he's done an incredible job, <laughs> amazing build, you know, restoration, it's just way beyond anything anybody could have expected. Way beyond the normal restoration. He's taken it to a whole different level. He's gone all out. During this entire journey, the Capri only left the hideout twice. That was for structural work at CNC Collision and paint at JR Customs. Shannon himself put a lot of 14 to 16 hour days into this car over the course of several months not to mention the help from many amazing people. This ASC McLaren is now one of one and was hand built for Ted Vaughn. Like many of you watching, Shannon is a diehard car and Fox body enthusiast that loves building things with his own two hands. What better way to form a legacy than restore this ASC McLaren for his uncle Ted. Every last detail, part and component on this Capri was carefully crafted to perfection. At the end of the day, there is so much to talk about with Project Mercury Rising, but we're gonna save that for another day. On behalf of Shannon, Uncle Ted, Shannon's family, and everyone that played an important role during this awesome build, we hope that you all have enjoyed this humble journey by real enthusiasts just like yourselves. 2019 does mark the 20th anniversary for LMR, and we will be celebrating this accomplishment at our annual cruise-in. 
where you can see this unique build and witness the amount of hard work, dedication, and attention to detail in Ted's ASC McLaren. For more information on the cruising, be sure and check out LMR.com. Of course, for more ASC McLaren goodness, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and share this video, and for all things Fox Body, keep it right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR.com. Yeah. <laughs>